since 2009. Now, I'm very excited to be joined in studio by one of my normal shed dwelling guests, Liam Taylor. How's it going, Liam? I'm really good, thanks. How are you, Spanners? So normally, you hang out in my shed with me, and mm-hmm. I've even hung out in your shed as well. And we, we talk about, you know, the creative arts around music production. Hmm. So, like, you're... You know, you're not one of these superstars. In my mind, you are. Aww. But would you would you have said the dream was to make, do music at, at Wembley with crowds roaring around you? That was the dream until I think I was 17 and I went to music college. At music college, they were like, that's not really a viable career option, is it? So have you maybe thought about behind the scenes, lighting tech, studio tech, any of that stuff? And that kind of broke my heart a little bit. To be honest, that's like in the school play when they go, yeah. "Well, uh, we, the Joseph is taken, the part of Joseph." However, we do need a giraffe or a bush, or for a, some reason. Yeah. So, so you decided to become the music equivalent of a giraffe in a nativity play. Kind of. I mean, my reaction to that was to try and do literally everything I can, and the result is that I have a studio shed covered in wires. Yes, and and, I, and I've seen it, and mm. it's magnificent. You should wear shoes in it, though. That would be my only <laughs> feedback. It seems no. sounds like I'm being uh, mean to Liam. I, I have. I'm not at all. Uh, I know how hard working you are. And, and, and the thing with the music game is that the very top echelons can be dominated by people who have the resources to not have to worry about, say, food. Mm. But you have to do things to make money for food. Yeah, I've got to make my own coffee as well. It's ridiculous. In 2019, I haven't automated it in some way. And yeah, this leads back to me trying to do everything around music. I've kind of gradually gained all these different skills. Playing guitar was the main thing. But then, oh, could you maybe play bass for us? Uh, I guess I could play bass. Could you play keyboards? Definitely can't play keyboards, but I suppose I will. I can try. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. I'll, I'll play something, definitely. <laughs> um, so, But you've managed to make your life around yeah. music, yes. which is an amazing achievement. If Is it if you do what you love, you mm. never work a day in your life? So it, not, It's still work. <laughs> I've still got to answer emails and come to BBC Cambridgeshire and all sorts. So. Well, you've got, you've got to always be promoting, haven't you? And, and mm. what we're talking to you about today is, you know, contracts for hire, you know, mm. like a music mercenary. Mm. Does that... Do you, do you feel like your creative chops are stifled doing this? Do you feel like you've sold out? No, I think there's always going to be a way to kind of wrangle any sort of task to be creative. So even if it's the most mundane thing, even if it's a really straightforward voiceover or commercial music, you can still find a way to be creative and have fun with it. Okay, and uh, there's some documentary about this process? Some kind of documentary. Tell, tell me about it. So you've made a five-track EP, mm-hmm. which is music to hire. It's not like a, a pop song. It's... What's it for? Well, so the the purpose really of it was just to see, can I make a five-track EP, so a five-track release over three evenings, well, three days, three wow. nights, okay. Yeah, me and a friend, and then whatever we have Monday morning is going to get released. So it was kind of drawing on my background, doing the commercial stuff, but the, the music is kind of, I'd call it weird electro, if you had to put a genre on it, but there's elements of jazz elements of weird stuff okay let's play a clip is this yep. the, the clip that says Sai talking about the process is that yeah, the so this is playing? my this is my good friend Sai talking about the project i think one of the main things that was quite challenging was figuring out a kind of workflow pipeline from one piece of software to another and vice versa and then having the process of sending stems from one to the other and to figure out how to do that in an efficient way was the hard part. Fascinating. That is a clip from a documentary about the music process with my in-studio guest, Liam Taylor, at LT Guitarist on Twitter. That, that correct, That's Liam? That's it, yeah. Uh, but first, uh, let's, uh, let's find out what's going on uh, on the county's roads and rails, because uh, otherwise, how will we know how to get to our dreams uh, on our county's roads and rails report? I'm joined in studio by Liam Taylor, a music mercenary. Is that unfair? No, no, that's about right. Okay, yeah. So we just we heard a clip with Sai talking yep. about the process. T- tell us a little bit about that. So as as Sai was describing, the, the the whole idea was: can we push our creativity? Can we push our workflow and see if we can create a five track instrumental EP within a weekend? And as he was saying, the the key challenge was working out: well, how are we gonna do that yeah. reasonably? So what we ended up doing was between us drafting five tracks and then essentially swapping them back and forth and remixing them until yeah. they're at a point that we could release them. Okay, so, but what what was the the brief, if you like? You sit down and you go, is it just going to be something that you and Cy like? Mm. Or is it going to be something we can sell? What's the, what's the aim? 
the the aim was literally what can we do <laughs> if people like it that's brilliant that with most of the music i create for the sake of creativity if people like it that's great but that's not it's more about getting something out of me just making stuff that i enjoy making but, but it's not just you it's you no. and Sai. so yeah. how do you know that Sai is someone who is gonna even with that that really tight time scale within mm. three days you now how do you know right i'm gonna do this project size the man to do it with so we've collaborated for the last five six years and Sai is one of my oldest friends i've known him since we were actual uh, toddlers i think so having that kind of relationship with someone you know you know when you can push them you know what their skills are you know yeah all of that stuff and I always say when you try to find a collaborator, try and find someone you actually like rather than someone who's uh, unnecessarily (laughs) good. Yeah, you've got to actually spend time with him as well. And trust, I suppose, that he's not going to abandon you Mm. if, uh, if, I don't know, I don't know who popular musicians are. I'll just if uh, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles ask you, (laughs) are they still around? Uh, Ask him to to jump on board. So why why don't we play a sample of the music you created in three days? I've got... uh, a uh, craft pepper is that the one? Craft pepper, close enough. Close enough. So what? Craft? Anything with a K is German. Is there a German Pretty influence? Much. I'm trying to remember how we actually came up with the name for that. I think it was a one of our cameramen suggested that it was a cross between craft work and the Chili Peppers. Ah. I don't see that personally, but it was good enough. Oh. So. Well, 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 let's have a listen to it, yeah. and then we'll talk about what it might be appropriate for. I'm getting a good vibe off this, Liam. What are we going to use this for? You could use that to sell a car. You could put that in a car advert. I reckon. So yeah. you've got you've got your you know a guy a salesman at the front saying you know our deals are crazy they're wild and in the background you've got do 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 yeah that's yeah, cool that works yeah okay fantastic well, <laughs> let's listen to some some more I guess more commercial music yeah uh, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles which is where I scrambled to get the name of literally <laughs> any band I could with tracks of my tears. You're listening to BBC Radio Cambridgeshire with our in-studio guest, music man, Liam Taylor, mercenary musician for hire. Okay, I'm joined by music man Liam Taylor, listening to a bit of Smokey Robinson, Tracks of My Tears. It's fair to say, Liam, if you'd have been around, you'd have probably written a a hit as good as that. Yeah, Yeah, I reckon. (laughs) So you wrote a five-track EP in three days with Simon, uh, your friend. We listened to a clip of it. We've got a couple more clips coming up. And then it exists. Mm -hmm. You know, it exists. You can then, you can sell it. People can hire you, yep. you know, uh, if if they can if they can afford you and if they can find you, um, but they can find you on Twitter at LTD Guitarist or search for Liam Taylor Guitar, yep, presumably. That, yep. Yeah, or you can just wander up to his shed. I'll I'll give you I'll give you his home address <laughs> if you um, email me spanners at bbc.co.uk. Uh, How do you get started? Then you've got a blank sheet. Mm-hmm. You you've obviously you've made music before, so you're not just rehashing what you've done. How do you how do you start filling that blank page of music? So the first thing we do a couple of weeks in advance is me and Cy collaborate on a playlist, a Spotify playlist of the kind of influences we want to draw from. So our playlist was a lot of uh, Thundercat, Dan Lassac, uh, weird electro stuff. Oh, wow. Stuff. So people might not be aware of Dan Lassac. What was his big hit that was in the charts? Well, he he used to collaborate with uh, Screebius Pip. Oh, that's right. And we can't definitely couldn't play that on BBC Radio Cambridge, I don't think. Uh, you would have to listen very <laughs> intently <laughs> for certain words. Uh, yeah. That's not going to be on me if you choose to do that. But, but it's, a, it's certainly a high-energy sound. It's mm. sort of like an electronic sound with some kind of dry British accent yeah. rapping. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. And Dan Asak uses a lot of kind of retro, gamey type sounds as mm. well and lots of just weird noises, and that's something I drew from a lot, especially for this. So that kind of uh, electronic, gamey sound, it could put people off if you were trying to be number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if, yep. if you were trying to make a number one song, but but it's actually really suitable and well used for commercial purposes. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, especially like if you want to get literal with it, if you're trying to sell a video game or a video console, anything that's got those retro bleep bloops will do that. <laughs> I love that you call them bleep bleeps. Bra- brain, brain drain. Would that yep. be a good example of a bleep bleep song? It's it's a weird song. I don't know if it's a bleep bleep song. All right. Well, let's let's give it a listen. This is Liam Taylor, a uh, short extract from his track Brain Drain. <laughs> Oh, 
okay, well, we're not going to sell a car with this. This is really <laughs> intense. You could sell a video game. Do you know what this is like? This is like a walking off into the sunset track. Mm. You've defeated the final boss. <laughs> yes. And you're off. You're, you're off on your on your mission. So yeah. So you 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 establish what influences you want to go mm -hmm. to, and you've got kind of a style. Is it just a case of sitting at the keyboard and starting to play around? That's what I did for this track, Brain Drain. That was a. It started off as a keyboard loop and a bass line that I played without really thinking too much about what it would become and then I just sent those files to Sai who was sat next to me and he turned it more or less into what you just heard. C can I ask a really stupid question? Always. So with uh, with a good old ballad, because <laughs> I love me a ballad mm -hmm. I do, you know you kind of have a, a beginning a middle and end yep. with the bridge somewhere in the middle so that the boy band members know when to get up off their chair yep. and, and do a air a, grab. Air grab yeah. yep. uh, do you get kind of sucked into doing soundscape instead or do you, do you have a beginning, middle and an end of your tracks or does it kind of become a, almost like a loop it, it, yes and no sometimes there are loops i think um a couple of the other tracks which we don't have uh, samples of today they're more kind of uh, single progressions that kind of just gradually get crazier as they go along but the the three we've got today are very much verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus chorus which I realise is weird with no vocals, but that is very much yeah, how no, it sits I in my brain. I noticed you have um, no vocals on mm -hmm. there. Is that is that a choice, or is that something that you would ever have, just even someone doing a sample? We did think about samples. We thought about using uh, kind of archive footage, old advert samples. We thought that would be really fun, but it just came down to time. Like, we can write compelling music in three days, but we may be not compelling lyrics as well. Ah, I see. We're speaking to Liam Taylor, musician, mercenary for hire. If you can find him, uh, you can <laughs> you can hire him to make your music. Um, but if you do ever need a vocalist, um, just so you know, I mean, I've probably made you aware that I still know the whole rap from Mysterious Girl. That confirmed. song's already been written. Yeah, but start to finish, I can deliver that quality of rap. And that's, <laughs> that's all you need to know Good when to know. looking for okay. a vocalist. It's Major on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. PS1 is going to tell us all about the sports ball from two. You into your sports ball, Liam? As a musician, I'm going to gather no. No, afraid not. You sort Sorry. Of, you sort of pick, don't you? The football team or, or a guitar. That's what you pick at school. Pretty much. I remember kind of trying to support West Ham when I was about 11. I had the scarf and everything, and then I realised they weren't very good, and then I thought, well, what's the point in trying? Controversial. Well, you can, yeah. you can pick one of the local teams. See, I'm, I'm torn at the moment. I, I definitely want to take my kid to a game. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've not actually been to Peterborough or Cambridge, so I'm hoping people will tell me which of the local teams I should be I should be supporting. But yeah, when people say, "Do you play an instrument?" I go, "No, I could. I was good at sports. I, th <laughs> there was no reason for me to play an instrument." Uh, I'm talking to Liam Taylor uh, at LT Guitarist. You're a, a musician for hire, a mercenary, and you're telling us about this five-track EP that you made. Um, but there's also a documentary mm. about this five-track EP, and it's not like a you know, it's not pop songs. These uh, this is music that can be used in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, commercial music or just weird instrumental music, if you like. That's how I describe it. So so why was there a documentary and who made it? We <laughs> where was is this on Sky News? Can I see this documentary? So this documentary is we're we're frantically doing the last little bit of editing now to submit it to film festivals so if it gets into any of the festivals that will be out October half term what will it be called it will be called one weekend EP so the the music which is available on Spotify now is one weekend by the musical endeavor and the uh, the documentary will be called one weekend EP Ah, okay, cool. So, but you made the documentary basically as just shameless self-promotion. Yeah, completely. Oh, right. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, how does the feedback work? Is it just about the amount of money it can attract, or do you? Does it? Is there any kind of? Is there like a magazine or like our oh, best sell-out mercenary music available today? <laughs> I think the the real thing for me is if I can. If people can listen to the music that I've made in this e EP alongside similar artists, so as we said earlier, Dan Lassac, Thundercat, all the weird electronic stuff, if you can listen to all these tracks together and not necessarily realise, oh, two chaps in a shed knock this EP out over a weekend, uh. if it's not obvious that there was the time frame restraint, if it still basically stands up with its contemporaries, I think that'll be a indicator of success. Well, I suppose it's a, it's a good advert for your 
work rate. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's one thing, isn't there, with a band being able to come up with a good album that then generally gets them on the scene and then but they're playing that same album over and over again and mm. when they get spotted they get spotted for that album yep. release that album keep playing that album which is why a lot of bands when it comes to the second album it's terrible yes yeah and a lot of bands will say that they really hate the the one single that they're famous for and my attitude is always like mm, yeah but you can afford food so maybe <laughs> be a little bit more thankful there but we we are picking our pop stars and our really famous people based on the ones that can produce that one hit song or that mm. one hit album, what they're not necessarily looking for, looking for is people like you who can consistently turn up with a blank sheet of paper and produce something to order. Yeah, I really feel like that's an other people problem. I think I'm doing everything correctly and I'm sorry if the pop industry hasn't caught up with me yet, but whatever. Okay, so we've got one one <laughs> sample left. Uh, now this is a bit more bebop, bebop. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Bloop blop? Uh, bleep bloop music. Bleep bloop music. Yeah. So it could be in a computer game and it's called... D R and T in that order. D- okay, I mean that's not a very creative <laughs> name. It's especially it's really creative. What we did was we looked at some of the audio processes we used, and then that was the order of the plugins on the master track. You don't need to know this. See, some people are going to say I'm, I'm being mean to you, but I think you've brought it on yourself, Liam. Uh, so this is D R T. Tell me w- w- what company what business what industry is going to come and pick up drt i'm going to say gaming again or no let's go a curveball um a thai restaurant oh, okay well mm. this is a drt by liam taylor and Sai Sai pettit so the band is the musical endeavor the musical endeavor don't panic if you don't like it it's only, t- <laughs> it's only 20 seconds <laughs> Oh, there's some ba bow bow The duck guitar. Yeah. yeah. That could be in a movie. Yeah. Don't know what movie. Maybe a romantic movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you've definitely got the ba bow bow going on the there. Kind it's of good. The 70s. Oh, I liked it. Well, I'll tell you what, film. I know it's not as good, uh, but we're going to queue up some Ricky Martin next with Living La Vida Loca. Do you mind a bit of Ricky Martin? I don't mind a bit of Ricky. It's a very good. It's got good energy. Yeah, yeah. That's what I like to say. Definitely. Uh, so, Liam Taylor, you are not just a mercenary musician for hire. You also do podcasts, and mm-hmm. that, that's where our interaction comes yeah. from because I bring you the best of the county's online content creators, like Liam Taylor. You're a podcaster and a blogger. Tell me quickly about those. Podcaster, blogger, YouTuber. Yeah, I like making stuff. Basically, I like making video stuff. I like making audio stuff. Uh, the conversation at podcast started as an excuse to make uh, silly music, so comedy music. I had a rap about lemons about five years ago and that was the platform to release that <laughs> <laughs> fantastic so that's the conversation hat podcast and would you say i was your best ever guest on there oh easily yeah fantastic yeah, yeah. yeah okay he's does it doesn't look convincing <laughs> you have to look in his eyes not around his eyes liam taylor thank you very much for your time no worries thanks for having me